Okay, Spoon Guy here, and um, this afternoon I'm just going to be splitting this piece of privet. You see it's got a nice bit of a bend in there which we'll use as the bowl, and just the way this has grown, the, uh, the branch itself is quite oval. So we'll just get this split, and uh, also you can see here perhaps how the, the pith is off very much to one side. You might be able to see that. But that works out fine for what we are about to split. Using the fro, this is a 1875 fro, to do the splitting. So here we have our, our two halves, from this half we'll come in from the bark side and from this half we will come in from the pith side. So I'll do a bit of a cleaning up on that and uh, show you where we get to. Okay so I've just spent five minutes cleaning these up. You can see here we've come in from the bark side. Now the aspect here is whenever you come in from the bark side because of the curve you're never going to get a bowl as wide as you do if you come in from the pith side but because we had this beautiful natural curve so the fibres run straight the way through we've come in from the bark side and as you can see here in the grain there's also the natural circling that can occur coming in from this side. I'll take the rest of this bark off later so here it is for the handle the other half, with the curve coming this way, so this is where the bowl will be, down in here, curving up to the handle, I've taken a little bit off the back here. Now I've carved these out, plus some others, ready for a spoon carving workshop that I run. I like to use this broadleaf privet because I have access to heaps of it, unlimited supply. It's a nice fine grain timber, it's a white timber, so a little bit missing on the, uh, the grain traction front but it's a good predictable easy to carve timber so if you live anywhere in the world with a broadleaf privet it's a pest tree in most areas make use of it so I might just go and draw on some rough patterns onto this some shapes I'm not too sure what I'll do yet but I'll sit there and look at them for a minute whether they be a symmetrical spoon handle in the middle this one here you might see we have that pith line running through there, slight curve out this way, so maybe the handle will take onto that gentle curve. It'll be nice for the students to learn how to do a slightly curved handle rather than just a straight one. So there we are. That's where we're up to at the moment. I'll come back in a moment with some lines drawn on. So I've progressed a little bit. Got some things drawn out. This is our from the bark side. So what I've done here is I've just taken out a bowl shape there, drawn a bowl shape, and I've come across a little bit into the bark. I can take this a bit lower, but we need to also think about for the person who's going to be carving this, how deep they want that bowl to be. They might want a fairly deep bowl to be able to scoop stuff out. If they want a bit shallower, then we can do that, but that's really looking at that there. I've got the neck here fairly wide because when I axe it out I like to leave a bit of meat give people a bit of a chance to practice some of those those cuts um, another aspect here too is my rule of thumb I know we've got the one-thirds which this doesn't strictly adhere to but my rule of thumb is that half the width of the bowl is the maximum width of the handle that's just something that I like to do and here we have the one coming from the other side so here you can see I've followed this sweep of the of the pith line, or what was the pith line, and trying to maximise the width here. Maybe that's not quite so pretty, but that can be adjusted as we do the, the carving. Got a little dotted line just in here, just in case we need to, to shorten that up, but that's going to be up to the student on the day. I will axe this out prior to the day. 
down through here so they'll be ready to go taking some off the back on each one here get it to a, uh, a knife ready situation and these will be bagged up and put into the freezer and an interesting thing with this broadleaf privet is I found if you freeze it then the grain tends to come out a little bit better into it so that's another benefit uh, to not having this particular timber dry out so there we are from that nice curved piece of wood we've now got to this stage where I'll just axe those out and uh, I'll be ready for bagging up jolly good just going to like show you a little bit of the axing process here some ladder cuts to break the fibres Very important axing down this way. We don't come through and bang into there because that'll put a micro crack and cause a split later on, or maybe even shear off the side of the the bowl. Self-repressed cockatoo. Right, we're going to leave some of that there. Leave that a bit wider here so that we've got the option of going down a bit lower without spawning it. So there we have it. Two spoons, totally different beasts. Let's see the beautiful crank there, natural. This could be thinned down a bit later, but we'll talk about that with a student if they want. And the other one here. A little bit different. So there we are. Two spoons. <laughs>